That's so horrible. There we are. Oh. 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 Cheers, Bob. So yeah. kind of you. No. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Carry on, mate. <sighs> okay. Well, today, for the big experiment, we're looking at how snot stops dust and germs getting into your body. Oh, hang on. Uh, we're not going to be using real snot, are we? <laughs> of course we're not using real snot. <laughs> because you just drank it. But don't panic, Mark. It's fine. We can make fake snot instead. You'll need some gelatin, some corn syrup, it's essentially just liquid sugar, and some green food colouring for that lovely snot colour. Yes. First of all, we need to dissolve the gelatin. This needs hot water, so get an adult to help you. Now, mix up three tablespoons of gelatin with about the same amount of water. Gelatin's going in. Mark, will you help me put some food colouring in here? Now, we will add three drops of green food colouring, or a few more if you want to make it very snotty. Look at this, Mark. Oh, yes. This is a lovely green snotty consistency. Now, we need to leave that to cool down. Luckily, here's some that is already cool. That was there the whole time, Mark. <laughs> Now, we add six tablespoons of corn syrup. There it goes. That's all gone in, look at that, Mark. And I'm going to mix this up with a fork. Oh, yes. Until we get these great long strands of gooey snot, Mark. That's the stuff. Yeah, no, it's not. Look how snotty that looks. You can gross out your friends and your family. Now. The second part. Join me over here, Mark. Do not be confused, Mark. This is not a real human face. It is a model I have built. We will add some of the snot to this nose. Snot goes in the nose. I'm putting a lot of snot in. There we go, Mark. Now, look what happens when I fire this vacuum cleaner bag full of dust at the snot. Ha! Wonderful. The dust and filth gets trapped in the snot. Just like the snot in your nose stops nasties and germs getting into your body. It then hardens into a nice, safe bogey. Like these I prepared for you earlier, Ma. <laughs> Lovely. Don't eat those, though. I am saving them for later. Oh, hey, Prof. You look kind of... Buff? Ripped? Like something out of a nightmare. You're just jealous of my six-pack sunshine. Now! All you need to make a telescope are two magnifying glass lenses. That's it. Demonstrate them. There we go. Now, they make things bigger on their own, but wait till you see what they can do when you put them together. And two cardboard tubes. For the first one, you can use an old crisps tube. Yeah, I've uh, actually helped the experiment massively already by eating all the crisps. Yes. Thanks, Mark. And the second one you'll have to make yourself using card and sticky tape. And, Mark, while Bob's doing that, you can cut the end off the crisp tube so we can see through it. On it. Ideally, you should get a grown-up to do this, but unfortunately, we just have Mark. Now, slide it inside. That's right, so it fits. Uh, put some tape on it to hold it in place. Oh, that won't slide in and out. Real science. There we go. Perfect. Now, if you tape the magnifying glasses to the ends of both tubes... That's one magnifying glass. We're nailing this. I will hold it in place. Easy, easy. easy. They think they're nailing it. I think small children at home will do far better. There you go. And you have a simple telescope. Here's one I made earlier. Oh. Yeah, you didn't make that. Someone else did. Now slide the tube so the lenses move closer together or further apart to get the image in focus. Yeah. Wow. It Hello. works. But hang on. You're upside down. Ah, I'm supposed to be. That's how telescopes work. The lenses bend the light, so the image appears upside down. If you want it the right way up, you'll need an extra lens. Or just stand on your head. We're going to use our telescope to look at the stars, but remember, there's one star you must never, ever look at through a telescope. And no, it's not me, it's the sun. Because if you look at that, it'll damage your eyes, right? Exactly, Mark. So, you know... Don't do it. This machine generates sound, and the sounds cause this metal plate to vibrate. Now, if I sprinkle some sand on here, 
and turn this machine on, it will begin to vibrate. It's pretty cool. Yes, the sand has moved, as you can see. Now, if I change the sound, the vibration will change. Watch what happens. Wow. I know. 952.7. What's going to happen? It's like I'm DJing, but with sand. Yeah, it's banging. Thank you. It's not my favorite tune, but the sand seems to like it. Nice. Uh, okay, Bob, why don't you kick things off? It would be my pleasure, Mark. Step right this way as we take a journey to the stars. Oh, you don't mean? Yes, Mark. This week, I, Bob the Robot, have made a model. As you can see, our solar system consists of eight planets orbiting the Sun. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as an array of moons and small planets. Right. Which one's most likely to have aliens on it? No. Mark! Oh, for pity's sake. It's incredibly unlikely that life exists on any planet other than Earth. The planets further away from the Sun are too cold, and the ones closest to the Sun are too hot. Ah, come on! Yes! <laughs> You spotted that, I see. Yes, the temperature on Venus, for example, is 500 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to turn a tin can into a puddle. Bob, I, I totally think you should holiday there. Venus is also covered in choking clouds of poisonous carbon dioxide gas. Ooh, ooh. And the atmosphere is heavy enough that it can crush you flat. Oh, oh, whoa, why, why? Look how flat he is, Mark. And that's not all. You see, the clouds are also full of acid rain that could dissolve what's left of you. Uh, right, I uh, think I might just stick to Tenerife. Good afternoon, and yo to all you young people out there. As an international superstar scientist, I've been pretty much everywhere on Earth, and I know pretty much everything. See that huge smudge of green across the top half of the planet? Pine trees. And those green blobs across the south? Rainforests. Basically, like someone on a mad trolley dash, plants are all over the shop. And on top of all the plants on the land, there's the trillions and trillions of algae that live in the sea. Now, if you put every living thing on Earth together and weighed it, you'd find that over 90% of this massive weight is plants and fungi. Which means that animals account for just a measly 10% of living things. And that includes overweight whales, pregnant elephants, and people who eat chips for breakfast. Double E. And that was my brain dump. It's so horrible. I will save you. I will save you. You're my best buddy, Tim the Plant. Don't worry, little fella. <laughs> Making up your medicine. What in the name of Newton's wig is he doing now? Well, in order to get him back on the show, I said he could play with some poo, and for some reason he went for it. Now, what I'm doing here is well sciencey. I'm making fertiliser the old school way. I'm using one part dry blood, one part ground up old bones, and one more part rotten cow dung. <laughs> oh, oh, that stinks. Robot, cover me up. Come of on. Of course, Professor. Ooh, ooh, even I can smell that, and oh. I have my nose on mute. Oh, uh, sorry about that. I had beans last night. Oh, you mean the fertiliser? Yep. Now, today's show has really taught me something. Well, that's a first. Since I adopted Tim, I've been reading up on plants, and believe me, they've got it tough. They get eaten, they get trodden on, some leaves even get used as toilet paper. Sorry, mate, I didn't want you to have to hear all that. No, oh, no, no, no. Plants aren't pushovers, you idiot. They've had millions of years to learn how to defend themselves. Veg, fight back! Wicked! Are we making bubblegum flavoured slushies? Please, please tell me we're making slushies! Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. No, this water represents the ocean. Ah, boring, unbubblegum flavoured ocean. Mark! I mean, incredible, awesome ocean world! Yes. And as the ocean splashes around, it absorbs carbon dioxide or CO2, as we call it, from the pollution in the atmosphere. For thousands of years, the amount of dissolved CO2 
in the air state roughly the same and marine life adapted to thrive under these conditions. See? But look what happens when we add too much CO2. Right, so we are making slushies. <laughs> no, Mark, no. This is CO2, just in a frozen form. All that extra CO2 in there is making the seawater acidic. And what happens to creatures like coral when you add them to acidic seawater? They think it's awesome? No, it kills them, you nincompoop. Coral reefs are dying out all around the world. It's a terrible problem, and we all need to focus on solving it. Professor, can I do my song now? It's about the difficulties of being a robot in a human world. Not uh, just yet. Maybe later. Prepare yourself for an insane look at what they don't tell you in the science books. From inner space to the universe, we're on the case to face the worst. It's icky and it's whiffy and it's yucky and it's squishy, but we love it.